Greetings once again, my fellow Star Trek fans and my friends and my fellow lovers of the USS Enterprise and CC-1701D. You can see we have the lovely fan home, Bill the Enterprise D. She's nearing completion. We got some work on an nacelle, little things to touch up and the decals finally to go on the primary hull. The reason we're using her today is that we're going to be doing a Playmates USS Enterprise NCC-1701D and what's going to make this one special is the fact that this is the first one we're going to go back to 1992 to the original release of the Enterprise D from Playmates and it kind of would kick off what was to come and eventually work its way down to the fan home Eagle Moss build the Enterprise D so let's go check it out okay so let's take a look at this one and I've been showing you guys well I've been making new videos to kind of refresh some of my older lower quality videos and make them a little bit better looking in high uh, definition what still blows my mind is that these aren't in the best of conditions but you know I bought these as a Star Trek fan um, not so much as a collector so I opened them all I had them I was playing with them and they were I did keep them in storage um, over the years when I had moved but they're not in pristine condition they do have wear and I guess my point is that this was 1992 and it's just blowing my mind because it feels like I just got this this is from Star Trek the next generation this is the Starship Enterprise NCC 1701D of course Star Trek the motion picture uh, excuse me why do I keep saying that Star Trek the next generation premiered in 1987 so um, we had seen this a few years later and this is Playmates um, I'm trying to remember the first Playmates issue electronic Star Trek item um, I'll put it up because I'm that's an interesting question I don't know if this was the first this was the first for Star Trek the next generation but I don't know if they had the original Enterprise or not but um, this is the NCC 1701 you can see she's got dual light up engines four authentic starship sounds the warp drive the impulse power the phasers and photon torpedoes highly detailed 15 inch replica of the starship enterprise bonus technical blueprint included you can see actual sounds from the tv show and one of the reasons one of the ways you can tell that this is the original release from 92 is it does not come with a stand you can see this is collector's edition number 248442. So that's the front of the box. You can see a beautiful illustration of the gorgeous NCC 1701D. So we're looking at the ends of the box now. These are pretty much all the same because most of the information is on the back. So this is pretty much what was on the cover. This is stock number one, uh, excuse me, 6102. Both ends of the box are identical, as are the sides. Pretty much the same on all sides of the box. And it's where we get the information is when we look at the, the back of the box now. And again, look at that beautiful Starship Enterprise that we've come to know and love. This is the Star Trek The Next Generation Starship Enterprise, the Galaxy Class Flagship of the United Federation of Planets. Absolutely beautiful. We're introduced to her. The first, the premiere of the series was a two-parter called Encounter at Farpoint Station. And we're introduced to Q. And we're introduced to Picard and all the characters and Riker. And it's just, I don't know if it's because of my generation, but that, this is my second all-time favorite Star Trek. Of course, the original to me is the best ever, but the next generation to me is the next best thing. 
So you can see the way she looks, the diagram, it shows all the, um, the little goodies. We've got 10 forward, and actually 10 forward would be here. We have the lifeboat stations, the captain's yacht, the saucer module, reaction control, uh, control thruster, upper sensor platform, and the main bridge. Of course, the main bridge probably should be right about here. Then we have the light, the uh, captain's yacht on the bottom. We've got the forward photon torpedo launcher. We got the Bassard collectors, the photon exhaust, navigational reflector and long range sensor array. We got the docking port, um, the reaction control thruster along the side, just like it is on the primary hull. And we got the battle section in the paint pointing to, of course, this section. Of course, the battle bridge is under the primary hull when it separates. We've got the sensor array, phaser array, uh, saucer impulse engines, and again, the, the nacelles, and the warp field grill. So, you can see it has the button to activate. Press the phaser or the photon torpedo buttons to activate the weapon system sounds. And when you press the warp drive or impulse engine buttons, they activate warp impulse sounds and light up the engines. You can see what else is coming out from Playmates. And this is, let's see if you can see that, 6102. And this is 1992. Man, this is like, what, 32 years old? I can't believe it. Wow, it's just blowing my mind. And we have a bit of information on this glorious vessel. Log on, USS Enterprise NCC 1701D. When it comes to the Enterprise history, the first Federation starship was the NCC 1701. It was a Constitution class. Second Federation ship to bear the name was the A, the third was the B, and the fourth was the C. Remember, the, um, it's going from the Constitution Class 01 right to the A because the NCC-1701 was the refit, but it was still the same ship. So that's why um, they're not counting the refit as a separate ship. The Third Federation ship to bear the name was the B. The fourth was the C, and I love the uh, Ambassador Class ship. Currently, the USS Enterprise NCC-1701D Galaxy Class, built at Utopia Planitia Fleet Yards on Mars. She was commissioned in 2363, current commander, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. The current USS Enterprise is a Galaxy Class starship, powered by impulse and warp drive engines. It is the hallmark of spaceship systems design ever built. The Enterprise is the most powerful and advanced starship the Federation has ever had. Equipped with the latest warp drive technology, the USS Enterprise can reach a top speed equal to 1.909 times the speed of light. Cruise velocity, the starship averages warp factor 6, with a crew complement of 1,012, which includes family and children. The USS Enterprise ranks as the largest starship in the galaxy. Through the vessel has 42 decks, 35% of the internal volume is reserved for future expansion and missions specific functions. The structure of the ship's hull is supported by energy fields which tighten and flex as necessary. The USS Enterprise is protected by deflector shields capable of withstanding blasts from enemy vessels. An array of phasers and photon torpedoes make the Enterprise battle ready. The evacuation of the Starship Enterprise becomes necessary. The saucer module is capable of atmospheric entry and terrain touchdown. All right, so why don't we go ahead and open it up now. We're gonna take this beautiful lady out. And just like the Klingon ship, they have like a, uh, there's a cardboard kind of tray. Let me try to get her out uh, let's see what is this All right, there's a couple of 
I think that's everything. All right. So let's see if the box will stay up over here. Just like that. All right. So you can see the kind of cardboard tray that the ship comes in. And what we do is bring the, the back flap up and then we can just kind of pull it out just like that. So let's get some of the cardboard out of the way because um, I think the nacelles, yes, are in this one. Uh, we got the, the paperwork. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to take everything out of the plastic. And we'll go over the instructions to show you guys how to put the batteries in, but this is pretty self-explanatory. So let's just put the nacelles on. See, the, um, the nacelle pylons have metal contacts. And what you can see is in the inside of the, uh, the nacelles, those metal contacts. So it doesn't really matter which side you put it on. But what we're going to do is we're going to line it up. And it's going to kind of slide on, just like that. So let's do the same thing for the other side now. Again, line it up. Just like that. And that's pretty much all you have to do to assemble the starship. And I don't know, for some reason, I didn't put on the decals or the stickers, the peel and stick stickers. Um, I did for the Enterprise B when that came out, but I didn't do it for this one. I wonder if I wanted to just kind of keep it preserved. Anyway, let's go over the paperwork first. And this is on, only because this was actually on the ship. You remember when it was at the store, you could actually try it out. So I took that off and that's on the, the bag for the paperwork. All right, let's put that aside and let's check out some of this stuff. We're gonna start with the stickers. Look at that. The NCC 1701D. You can see the transporter arrays. You can see the, the little symbols that are going to go on top of the, uh, the nacelles and on the bottoms. So yeah, this is pretty cool. And these are peel and stick. These are not water slide. All right, let's put these to the, these to the side. And I love the, uh, the technical blueprints because they don't do that anymore. Let's go ahead and light her up. This is the Starfleet USS Enterprise from Star Trek The Next Generation. You can see the main bridge on top, the saucer module, the main shuttle bay, the battle section, the warp nacelles, the main impulse engine, and the aft phasers. The USS Enterprise NCC 1701D is a galaxy class starship and was completed in the year 2363. Holding a complement of 900 crew members with a maximum load of 800 passengers, the Galaxy-class starship is the largest in the known galaxy, equipped with Type X phasers. Starship Enterprise is capable of firing a beam of 5.1 megawatts at any target within a 360-degree field of fire. The deflector shield configuration for the USS Enterprise provides protection from natural hazards as well as attack from unfriendly forces. You can see the next illustration has the virtual phaser array, deflecting array, docking ports on either side of the captain's yacht, main deflector dish, and the tractor beam emitter. And this is 1992. So that was the technical blueprint 
So now we're going to look at the instructions. And again, this is this one is self-explanatory. It's not quite like the board ship that required assembly. While the Enterprise B, they had a tricky setup. This is pretty straightforward, so you can see where all the decals, the stickers are going to go. And this is Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, to attach the warp engine the cells, we just did that. So to activate the whip weapons, systems, sound and lights, press the phaser or photon torpedo activation button, C diagram B. To activate the warp impulse sounds and light up in engines, press the impulse engine or warp drive activation button, C diagram B. So for battery placement, to replace the Enterprise batteries, let's see, let me try to slide open the cover from the battery compartment on the bottom of the Enterprise, see diagram C. Replace the batteries with three new AA alkaline batteries and put the cover back on. You can see the diagram. And again, this is 1992. So this is the one that started it all. Um, everything from man and I'm talking electronic ones this one started it all then AMT would come out with the uh, I think AMT had already come out with the fiber optic one I'm not sure it may have been after 92 and then Diamond Select eventually would make just absolutely amazing Enterprise D models okay so looking at the bottom you might see the little arrows. So all you really got to do is just kind of slide it back. And again, this has no stand. That's how you know you got the 1992 one. If you, well, all of them have a different cover that you can put on. You don't have to use the one that's on a stand. But if you have it in a box, chances are it's the 1992 version if it doesn't have the stand. Okay, so once we get the batteries in position, what we'll do is we'll just slide the cover back, just like that. Just try to, and it clicks into place. Okay, now she's ready. So let's put off the light, and let's uh, listen to some sound she makes. So let's go ahead and shut off the lights and I'll show you guys what she looks like in the dark. So you notice that the um, the impulse engines don't light up. Um, the deflector dish doesn't light up either. I'm wondering if it does on later versions. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Anyway, this you can see the underneath where the captain's yacht is. And you can see 1992 right there. You can see the uh, phaser arrays, all the windows, the docking sections captain's yacht and all the escape pods 
those of you that are doing the fan home build know <laughs> about the escape pods and all the windows in the Enterprise. Looking at the bottom of the secondary hull, you can see the um, phaser array, more escape pods as we go aft. There are also phaser arrays on the bottoms of the nacelle pylons as well as the back of the ship. So when we flip her over, you can see there are two more aft phaser arrays. Um, there are no phasers on the, uh, the nacelles themselves, but looking at the back of the ship, you can see the aft torpedo launcher, as well as the, uh, the impulse engines, and we have shuttle bays one, two, and three. So I don't know if it's because it's really old or perhaps I need to change the batteries, but it's not very bright. Maybe it's the batteries or maybe it's the fact that she's 32 years old. she makes that sound and she goes into warp those are her phasers and the photon torpedoes so my friends this is the playmates 1992 star trek the next generation the flagship of the federation is the enterprise ncc 1701d so my friends i hope you enjoyed this video um, it's going to be a lot better than the previous one that I did. I hope so. This one will be in a uh, high definition. And I thank you so much for watching. And until my next video, I'll talk to you guys soon.